Hello. In this video, we look at methods of proof. Um, we'll do one video, uh, one method of proof for this video, and another method of proof in another video. Um, so first up, we got to talk about the background. Um, we're going to be proving mathematical statements. Um, the name of a mathematical statement that is true and can be verified as true is a theorem. Now the verification is the part that we're going to focus on. We're going to be making proofs and the proof is the written verification that shows that the theorem is definitely true. You got to make sure it's understandable. It needs to be convincing as long as the person that you're um, that's reading the proof is is knowledgeable in, in the um, background that's necessary. You got to make sure that there's no ambiguity in the in the, the mathematical uh, meanings and the, the words and the phrases. Got to make sure that it's clear the symbols. And so we need that person that, that's reading the proof to at least have a small background enough to be able to follow the logical connections to come to the conclusion. Okay. And part of that is making sure you understand some definitions. And so we need to make sure that um, there's no gray area. A definition is an exact meaning of the mathematical word. We can say that, you know, the number eight is even. But what does it really mean? Let's take a look at some basic definitions on the next slide. An integer is even if it can be written as two times another integer. And so eight is even because it can be written as two times four okay officially that's what that's what it means to be even so when it comes up in a proof that a number is even we can then go from definition and rewrite that number as two times some other integer an integer is odd if it can be written as two times some other integer plus one seven is odd because it can be written as two times three plus one okay all right great so if it comes up in a proof that a number is odd we can rewrite that number as 2a plus one for some integer a you don't have to use a you can use any variable whatsoever all right great um and so if you have two integers that are both even or two integers that are both odd then they have the same par parity and then if they if one is even and one is odd they have opposite parity Okay, now let's take two integers, a and b. We say that the integer a divides the integer b. And the way we write the symbol is with a bar, vertical, kind of elongated above the, the numbers or the variables. And you read that bar as the word divides. So what's on the left is A, what's on the right is B. A is the smaller number that goes into the bigger number, or they could match. Okay, for example, um, 5 divides 70. And the definition of that means that the number that's on the right-hand side, B, or the 70 in our example, can be written as A times some other integer. 70 can be written as five times some other integer. That other integer for us is 14. Okay. And then the A in this, the number that's on the left of the divides bar is called a divisor, or you might've heard it written as um, called a factor. The number B, the number that's after the division bar, 70 in our example, what we say about that is that 70 is a multiple of 5. Um, B is a multiple of A. 70 is a multiple of 5. Okay. And so when we say these things in the proofs, we now know what they mean and we can translate them and then use them to chain together logical statements to prove something. What does it mean for a number to be prime? It has exactly two divisors, and it has to be a natural number to start out with. That's the numbers one, two, three, the counting numbers. Um, it's prime if it has exactly two positive divisors. Of course, one and itself. Okay. So an example would be the number seven. The positive divisors of seven 
are 1 and 7 only. 7 is prime. Okay? Now, an integer is composite if it factors as two integers multiplied together that aren't bigger than one, that are bigger than one. So example, 14 factors as seven times two, two integers that are bigger than one. So basically it just means that it has other positive divisors than one in itself. So reading this technically then, uh, one is neither prime nor composite. We want this n to be different than the one. And so one is in this ambiguous kind of uh, limbo, neither prime nor composite. All right. And then finally, um, a real number is rational if you can write it as a fraction of integers. Just make sure that the denominator is not zero. And a real number is irrational if you can write if you cannot write it as a fraction of integers. It's the opposite of being rational. OK. All right. Great. So for our. Um, method of proof in um, this video, we're going to need an, um, even odd and, oh, you know what? Uh, we're going to need even and we're going to need um, this division. What does it mean for A to divide B? These are the two definitions we'll need in our um, two different proofs. Okay. Um, they both are examples of the direct proof. Okay. When you have a, a theorem, not always, but often, it's written in the form that is called the conditional. If P, then Q. So for a direct proof, what you do is you start with P, who is the hypothesis. You chain together logical mathematical statements, and you end up with the conclusion, Q. Direct. Here's an example. If n squared is, I'm sorry, if n is even, then n squared is even. Seems plausible, right? Think of any even number out there and square it. Of course, you'll get another even number, but we need to prove it. We need to convince using definitions, using a sound argument. We need to convince that it's true. Just because you can think of, you know, any integer that you can think of, it works for um, eight when you square it, you get 64. You can go down that list and go on, but it's not a proof. Okay, that's just an example. So to prove it, we have to go from definitions. We know what it means to be even. We're going to do a direct proof. The value, um, the, the P is the hypothesis and Q is the conclusion. We have to start with P, chain together definitions and logical mathematical statements to get the N squared is even, Q. All right. So I like to announce the fact that I'm starting my proof by putting the word proof. And in a direct proof, I start with the hypothesis. Right? Now, what does it mean? Definition? Well, it means that that number can be written as twice an integer. Some integer. You know, whatever variable you want to use. I use A here. Okay, great. Well, then... Let's get to the conclusion. N squared. If I want to prove that's even, I need to fit this definition. So let's consider N squared, which is N times N. Right? Mathematical statement there. And then let's put together 2A times 2A. Let's substitute. Multiply them together. You'll get 4A squared. Right? But we don't want to write it as 4A squared. You see, our job is to show that it's even. So we want to write it as 2 times another integer. Yes, this is true. This is 4a squared. And you can write it like that as long as you take this next step and pull the 2 out. The definition of being even is that the number can be written as twice an integer. Okay, well, a is an integer. a squared is an integer. Twice a squared is an integer. And so just to give this guy a, a renaming. Call it w. W is some integer who's equal to 2a squared, some integer. You did it. You just wrote n squared as twice an integer. Well, that's the definition of n squared being even. You just did a direct proof. 
Good job. You started with the hypothesis. You ended with the conclusion. Put a little box or QED um, to stand for you have proved. Um, you have proven the statement that was to be proved. Okay, let's do one more example, and then we'll switch methods. So I have three integers, A, B, and C. All right. My hypothesis is that A divides B, and at the same time, B divides C. Our job is to show then that A divides C. Officially, this is the transitivity. That if you have an example would be if uh, if five divides twenty, and twenty divides, uh, um, let's go. Yeah, let's go a thousand. Okay, then it should be true that five divides a thousand. It makes sense. Like okay. But just that example is not enough. We have to prove it. We have to convince someone using definitions and mathematical statements that it is true. And we're going to use a direct proof. Start with the statement that you're proving it. Start with the hypothesis. Go with the definition of what that means and chain together mathematical statements to get you to the conclusion. All right. So A divides B. What does that mean? That means that B can be written as A times some integer. Remember the ordering here. The one that's after is the, um, the multiple. The one that's before is the divisor. This guy is the multiple of A. And this guy is the divisor of B. Okay, make sure you keep them straight. All right, great. And so, you can write it then as B equals A times W for some integer W. Since we're supposing this is true. Okay. And then the other one. B divide C. Well, that means that C can be written as some multiple of B. Now, don't use the same variable w. Change it up. Use a different variable. It's not necessarily going to match whatever um, the other variable is. And so this is the definition of what's going on when we say that a divides b and b divides c. And we want to put these together to end up with a divides c. Well, how do we do that? We're going to substitute. If C is equal to BZ and B is equal to AW, we can sub in, replace the B with AW. Now we have C is equal to AWZ. Okay. Almost done. You see, our job is to show that A divides C. By definition, that means that C can be written as a multiple of A. We have it. This WZ, we can rename to some other variable. And we have exactly what it means for A to divide C. That C can be written as A times some other integer. And all we did was really substitute. We took the definition and we substituted and we did the proof. Great job. So we'll stop right here. The next video will be a different method of proof. This method of proof is called direct proof. Thank you.